Hey everyone, Nightharo here, and today I've got a farming build guide for you. <laughs> so this is one of the best and easiest ways to make money in ESO, and for a lot of people it's really enjoyable and, and really relaxing. You can kind of run around overland, pick flowers, grab some mushrooms, maybe fish a little bit, you know, do whatever, and you can make a ton of money doing this because a lot of the older players, you know, they've done this a, a bunch and a lot of them don't find it as enjoyable as they used to, and so mats always sell for quite a bit of gold. Uh, so this is a, a great way to make gold whenever you're a new player and you can kind of start whenever. So I'll just go ahead and start out here. There's going to be some very important things that you don't want to miss in this video. A lot of times I'm like, hey, skip around. You can still do that, absolutely. And if you're very knowledgeable, you know, definitely do, do whatever you want. But if you're new, uh, there might be some crucial things. So you might want to make sure you, you watch the whole thing. So start off here with gear. The way this build is going to work is we're going to be able to run around being stealth the entire time and we're gonna be at movement speed cap. It actually becomes faster if you're in a good area to farm, not to mount, because it takes so long to mount and you're constantly unmounting. So it's better to just run around, not mounted, and you wanna be at movement speed cap. So your movement speed normally, 100%. You can move it up to 200%, so you can move twice as fast. If you're unmounted and then, and then mounted movement speed, you can go up to 250. So we're gonna aim for that 200% movement speed cap, and we'll talk about that more in a, in a minute. But to be able to do that and to be able to run around and and you don't need to be a Nightblade. You can be any class, any race to be able to do this. There's one set you absolutely want, and that's called Darlock Bray. Darlock Bray is going to give you two main benefits. Uh, the main one is for the five piece. It's going to give you a lot of magic and stamina recovery whenever you're stealth, and that allows you to perpetually be in stealth. Whenever you're stealth and you're running around, it, it drains your stamina a bit, and so having that is going to really help us be able to permanently be able to run around in stealth. And then the Magicka is nice because a few abilities you might want to use will, will cost Magicka to keep up your speed. So uh, Darlock Bray, it drops from Northern Elsewhere. Uh, that's one of the ones. The other thing is the four piece bonus reduces your detection radius. You can see you can run up to, to mobs <laughs> and basically run into them. And until you like actually hit them in front of them, you won't even aggro them. So that's the extreme. We're not gonna go quite that crazy of a build. You can if you want um, I, with this build or, or watching my Nightblade build, uh, but you don't need to, right? Because normally they're not standing on top of the node. You just need to not be bothered by them while you're running from point A to point B and not have to run too far out of the way to avoid being detected. So Darlock Bray is the one set you want five pieces and you want it always active. The next set you have kind of two choices here. The first is going to be a crafted set called Night Silence. Now what Night Silence lets you do is it reduces, normally whenever you're stealth, it reduces your speed by 40%. So with this five piece set on, which again is crafted, it makes that go away. So your speed is still 100%. And that's really important because we want to make sure we're at that speed cap. So that's why we like Night Silence. Alternatively, if you don't mind being a vampire, that's definitely the way to go. You can ask around in Guild or even in Zone. Someone will give you a vampire bite for sure. You don't need to purchase it from the crown store or anything like that, and it's not too bad. And it's a kind of a fun quest line, honestly, if you've never done it. Uh, but that will allow you, there's a passive in that skill line, which we'll talk more about later, that will also re re eliminate rather the movement penalty cost of being stealthed. So there's two ways to do it. You can either use the five piece set, night silence, or you can become a vampire. You're Choice. Now it is a little bit better if you become a vampire, that is kind of the way to go. And the reason for that, because your second five piece set, what I'd recommend is Jailbreak. And this is a really easy to, to get set. It drops from uh, one of the early dungeons. Jailbreak, what it does is it gives you minor expedition, which increases your movement speed by 15%. Now, if you're a Nightblade, and you say, go, go watch the Nightblade video <laughs> if you're a Nightblade, because I go over all that kind of stuff there. Uh, but Nightblades don't need this. Just about everybody, everybody else really does. Um, but Jailbreak will give you a 15 percent speed increase. There are other ways to get speed. That'll be a whole section of this video, uh, but that's the other five piece set that I recommend. So Darlock Bray and then either Night Silence or Jailbreak, depending on if, you, if you're a vampire or not. And then after that, we want Ring of the Wild Hunt. Ring of the Wild Hunt increases our speed by 45% uh, just for the ring, and then it's swift, so that's another 7%, so this is a 52% speed increase, so it's huge. Um, no reason not to, not to get this. You don't necessarily have to. There's a lot of other things you can do. I'll talk about some of them, but honestly, none of them really make as much sense uh, as just going and getting this ring. So, uh, Wild Hunt Ring. And then after that, it's whatever you want to wear, depending on how you set up these sets. I will also note that it's really good to have some, 
some cheap potions that you get overland, the stamina and magicka potions. We call them trash bots because uh, that's usually what most people do is throw them away or vendor them. So you want those because it'll help you with your recovery if, if you're casting a lot of, if you're having problems, if you're a mag character, you might have problems with stam. If you're a stam character, you might have problems with mag. So you can just use those to make sure that you don't ever run out of resources as you're running around overland. But generally with Darlock Bray, you shouldn't have much of a problem. I will note that this is easiest and best on a Khajiit and a Nightblade uh, for reasons I cover in those videos. Uh, Khajiit have a reduced stealth detection radius as part of the racial passives. Nightblades have a couple of skills that allow them to go invisible and not be bothered by monsters if you do accidentally aggro something. So that's why, but you don't, you absolutely do not need to be a Nightblade uh, at all. I'll also note that if you're a Argonian, not a reason to make a build, but if you're making a build just for, you know, farming, uh, an Argonian can be nice because sometimes you will have to swim and being an Argonian can be a lot of fun because they swim a lot faster. <laughs> than every other race. So. All right, after that, let's talk about CP. CP is really important and it's the green tree. The green tree is like where all the fun is at. So there's a couple of CP that you absolutely want. One is gonna be Master Gatherer. This is a slottable CP. It reduces the time it takes you to actually gather the resource, to actually pluck it by 50%. So that's just, I mean, it reduces it by half. So you're just gonna be able to grab resources so much more quickly. And then on to the next one, it's gonna really help your gather time. And then the other one is Plentiful Harvest. And what this does is it has a 50% chance to increase the yield of a normal resource node. So that just means whenever you're grabbing the resource, it can proc and then you get extra resources from that particular node. And then the last one here is also still from the green tree. It's gonna be out of sight. And uh, this one reduces your stealth detection radius between one to three meters, three at the max. But you absolutely want that. It'll just reduce, you know, it'll keep you from aggroing monsters on accident while you're running around just trying to gather. You don't really wanna be bothered by overworld traffic mobs. So uh, those are the three main CP. Uh, and the last one there, the out of sight is not slottable. So it's only the other two that you absolutely want to slot. After that, there's a bunch of CP that could be useful and that you might want to use. So let's start off with the fun stuff. Uh, fishing. <laughs> there's fishing CP. There's two CP for fishing. One is real technique, which decreases the amount of time it takes to get a bite by 25%. So you can fish a little bit quicker. It's kind of nice. You don't have to wait quite so long. And then the other one is angler's instincts. And what this does is it increases the quality of fish that you can get. It's so it's it, it gives you the tooltip that it's similar to what you would do if you normally if you're fishing with somebody else, you both have an increased chance of getting more rare fish. Uh, this it gives you about the equivalent. It does stack, so you can still uh, fish with a friend. Both of these CP though, that will increase your fishing are, uh, these are slottable CP. So if you go with the first two for gathering and then these two, you're kind of done with your green CP. So, you know, a, a lot of people, the best way to gather and to make money and make money in ESO period is the way that is fun for you. <laughs> so I do a lot of uh, builds and, and, and kind of guides on like running around stealing and doing routes and stuff like that and you get motifs that sell for a bunch. I enjoy that, it's a lot of fun. My wife loves running around gathering, just picking flowers. And so maybe you run around, you pick flowers and you also fish some, when if you see a good fishing hole, maybe you're trying to go through each one of the zones, you can grab chests and do other stuff and that's the best way. Just grab everything you can and that's the best way to, to be efficient and make money. You don't really, you know, sure you could ignore some stuff, but honestly, I would just grab everything you can. You're already there, it's gonna take you half a second and you could get some real nice benefits from it. On that same note, having Sigic skill line unlocked so you can see the Sigic portals. And uh, similarly with, with uh, Ledger Domain, to be able to see the, the, the Thieves' Troves, having both those unlocked will increase because you'll see Thieves' Troves just out in the world under a bridge or wherever. And same with the Sigic, uh, the Sigic portals, you can get some really good materials from that. So then you have Sigic portals, you've got chests, you've got lock boxes. Those are separate, those are two different things. And then you've got obviously all the normal, you know, gathering things you can do. So make sure to unlock those skill lines if you want to be most optimal. I guess. Other CP that, that are really interesting, one is Treasure Hunter. What this does is it increases the quality of items that you get from treasure chests. And this is mostly important if you are someone who likes those likes to open those chests to begin with, but also if you're someone who's trying to collect like all the sets from a given zone. Because if you have lower quality chests, they they have low to no chance of dropping items that are that are part of the five piece sets from that zone. But with this, it'll upgrade them and you actually, you have a better chance and uh, you, can, you can end up getting, you know, more items that you wouldn't otherwise get. Also, some items in these overland zones will sell for a pretty good amount. So that's another way of making just a little bit increase in, in money and gold that you can make, you know, 
per time. Another one here, and then Treasure Hunter is slottable as well. So again, you kind of see that you've got, we're gonna have like six or seven that you can slot, but you only have four slots. So uh, the other one here is Meticulous Disassembler. This is just a generically good CP. Whenever you're deconning things, it has a chance to increase, uh, give you back more mats. This is mainly important for like purple and gold jewelry, but it can be useful for any gold mat and, and when you're beginning out purple mats to, to some extent. But after a while, you'll, you'll have a ton of those in the bank. They still sell, um, but you'll have so many in the bank. I think if we all, if all the in-game players like sold all their mats, it would probably flood the market and drop the price for everything but like gold, gold jewelry and purple jewelry mats. So keep that in mind. And, and gold mats just across the board are always gonna be expensive and, and useful. So uh, yeah, and that, that's also a slottable CP. And the last one here is, is kind of, it can be really useful, it could be really fun, it can also kind of be a trap, uh, and that's called Homemaker. So Homemaker gives you a 10% whenever you find a recipe out in the world, it has a 10% chance of, of proccing and giving you a second recipe, like giving you a second thing for like a praxis or whatever. Um, the thing is <laughs> that the chances of getting so like anything really good is, is pretty low, and so it's like 1%. And then if you think of like, okay, well, 10% of the time, this will proc and it'll give me two of those. Well, the math works out to that 1% goes to 1.1%. So it ends up being a very small increase. But if you're someone who likes to loot all every urn, every box that they find in the overland and open world, then this might be a CP that you want to slot um, because getting free stuff is cool. The only thing that you need to worry about is like, okay, well, what other CP, you know, am I gonna use? And you know, when you're gathering, you might not fish. So you might not want to put on, slot either one of the fishing CP, you might not like fishing, period. So that can save you several spots and you can slot something like Treasure Hunter. And so just keep that in mind that while that looks really good, it kind of isn't as good as it might seem at, at least at first glance, but, uh, but still not terrible. So you might be in a situation where, you know, you don't fish at all. So you might be able to drop those CP and use something else, but just, you know, mix and match. The main thing is just the first two that I mentioned. You absolutely want to increase you, how fast you actually pick the item and then you have a chance of procking like extra, extra drops from the node. And then uh, after that, moving on, let's go ahead and kind of talk about speed just in general, okay? Because this is really important for this kind of a build. We want to make sure that we get to the cap of 200%. Now, there is a, you know, green CP that will reduce your penalty for stealth by 25%. Uh, this CP is kind of a trick because the actual penalty is 40%. So you go, you go from 100% of your normal speed to 60%, and then this reduces that penalty by 25%. So you go from 60% to 70. It's not really enough. I strongly recommend either going with uh, Night Silence or becoming a vampire. Either one, whichever you prefer. Being a vampire is, you know, more optimal, but again, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, so uh, let's talk about speed. So we've got uh, Ring of the Wild Hunt. It's going to be 45% for the ring, and then it gives us, it's a swift, which is the trait on it, and that's another 7%. So we get 52% increased speed just from that. So we're halfway there, over halfway there. After that, um, I recommend Channeled Acceleration. This is from the Sigic skill line. And the reason we like this skill, it's, I, as far as I know, there might be one other, but I think it's the only one in the game, only skill in the game that when you cast it, doesn't break stealth and increases your speed. So everything else that increases your speed, if you're a Nightblade, your, your path, it, your wings, everything else that I, that I am aware of, I, I could be wrong on one of these, but I, I'm pretty sure everything breaks stealth. Um, Channeled Acceleration does not though. So it'll give you Major Expedition, which increases your movement speed by 30%, and it's not too hard to get. So we're gonna say that, hey, with this build generally you want that, that puts you at 82%, so really well on your way. Uh, there's also the Swift Trait on your other two pieces of jewelry if you wanted to do that. It starts out, I believe, at 4%, and then goes up to seven per piece of jewelry if you choose Swift. For a Gathering build, you don't need this to be anything else that increases your damage or anything else, so going Swift is a great way to go. It might cost transmutes you know there are other other costs associated with that so I don't actually recommend you won't need to do this if you follow my recommendations for the most part but that is one way you, you can go if you're not able to follow everything that I'm recommending is making sure that your other pieces of jewelry are swift and in that case what would that put you at 90% uh, you know, or 190% of your max speed, almost almost 200%, but 190. Um, other things, if you're a Nightblade, we talked about this in the other video, you can slot Concealed Weapon for an extra 15%. And then, you know, the main thing is that if you are a vampire, you can instead 
uh, uh, go with a jailbreak set and that'll give you another 15%. So again, just kind of how I recommend it is we're going Ring of the Wild Hunt, puts us at 52%. Channeled Acceleration, it gives us another 30, so we're at 82%. And then after that, we want a Minor Expedition, which will give us 15% from our jailbreak set, ideally, and that will put us at 97%, uh, 197%, I'm sorry. Uh, so you're pretty much there at speed cap, right? You're, you're basically there with that. If you don't wanna do, you know, don't wanna be a vampire, so you're missing that 15%. If you wear a couple pieces of swift jewelry, that give you 14% if they're golded. Um, you probably don't want to gold out like Overland jewelry that's way too expensive. Uh, but you, even if it's white, that's another 8% for, for both of the items. Uh, so that puts you pretty close there. Other ways you can do this, you could, you could switch your Mundus to like a Steed Mundus. I typically wouldn't recommend that and it's why it's not part of the base build because then you, you'll usually want to have something other than that unless this character is just built for farming or unless you have a preset saved just for farming. In which case, I would say Steve Mundus, go go ahead. I think you can get up to like 15 uh, or 16% if you have all Divine's traits, and which increases your benefit of your Mundus, and you go with the Steed Mundus. Uh, so that could be another 15%, 20% uh, from that. There's also another green CP, Steed's Blessing, which increases your movement while not in combat up to 20%. And that's another one that if you have a spot for CP, that's probably the first thing I would do is Steed's Blessing. But again, you're gonna have two that you already use for your gathering and then it's kind of like, well, you probably want the treasure chest one. And so that only leaves you with, with one more, you know, blank CP spot. And if you're a fisher too, obviously that's gonna be way too much. Uh, so just, you know, something consider and decide what you wanna do there. Uh, but Mundus or, you know, CP passive, between all of those things, as long as you have, you know, your, your Ring of the Wild Hunt on, you're gonna easily be able to get to that 200% cap. A lot of people, the game doesn't tell you that there's a 200% movement speed cap, so you're only looking for plus 100%. So a lot of build guides that I've seen go way over and they're like, oh, where are these three sets and whatever, and I, I, I just don't recommend that. Um, going stealth and then making sure you get to that 200%, you don't really need to go over, it doesn't do anything for you, is absolutely the best way to go. So again, just kind of go over that real quick. So we've got our Wild Hunt ring, we've got channel acceleration. Uh, you might have a class buff that you can get, but you're probably not gonna wanna use it. We've got Swift Jewelry that we can add on. We've got the Steed Mundus, and then we've got Steed's Blessing for the green CP, like all the way over on the right. So between all of those things, you should easily be able to get to cap. Now let's talk about some, some passives real quick. These are things you absolutely don't need, but can be very helpful. So one is from the Ledger Domain skill line. The improved hiding is, is, is what the passive is called, and, and it reduces the cost of hiding. And that will make it where when you're running from point A to point B, you won't need to drink potions and stuff like that because you won't have to worry about your stam running out because you're getting more than more back than you're actually spending. Another one is the Dark Brotherhood skill line. It's called the Shadow Rider. Uh, it reduces the aggression radius of, of mobs by 50%. This is while mounted, but if you ever do need to mount, you're running from point A to point B, it's just kind of an honorable mention. It's nice to have. Absolutely not worth it going through the whole Dark Brotherhood skill line, but if you've already done it, it's kind of nice to have. Uh, after that, we have the Vampire Skill Line. The passive that you really need is one you get almost right off the bat. It's like the second CP you get. It's called Dark Stalker. You only need one point in it. If you put more, I believe it reduces the cost of stealth, which is can be nice. Uh, but generally, you only need one point in it, and that will reduce or eliminate, rather, the movement penalty. That 40% reduction in movement that you normally get for being stealth will totally remove it. And that's why you can then switch to something besides Night Silence for your set and get that minor expedition going on from, from jailbreaks, from the jailbreak set. And I think that's it for skills. Now, here's one of those really important things, okay? There's a couple of things that the game doesn't tell you and there's no way you would know, so it's very important that you know this. One, you need to make sure you level all of your crafting skills. So when you go to a node, what you see isn't the same thing that what somebody else sees. So, and what spawns there, what spawns there for you, what you can, you can get from that node, is a, a consequence of a couple of things one is, is your actual level of that character, and then the other one is the level of your gathering skill line. So let's say that you're going to a, you're going to like a mining node, right? So you're gonna get some sort of ore from it. It's gonna, what you see isn't necessarily what somebody else is gonna see. So they, they could see, you know, rubidite or something else, and what you see could be a different thing. And that is based on two main factors. One is gonna be your actual character level. So is your character max level? Um, obviously you can't do anything about 
about that besides level your character, uh, but it will be a combination of that and then your level in, in that skill. So your blacksmithing skill will determine if that's maxed out and your level is maxed out, then you're guaranteed to get the highest quality item from that node. Otherwise, it could be any, it could be either one. So just realize that you want to make sure that you max out all of your, your gathering, your blacksmithing, all of those crafting skills. There are the easiest way to do that is to decon things. Um, there's other guides as well. You can create stuff and, and what have you. Uh, that's outside of the scope of this video, but if you can max out your all of your, your, your gathering skill lines, all of your crafting skill lines, and it'll help you find better stuff over land. And that's very important. The game just doesn't and tell you that at least at least it didn't when i was leveling <laughs> and i don't think it does now either post-production night haro here i've got a couple of things actually more than a couple of things a uh, medium armor there are some passes from that skill line that will reduce your detection radius as well as the cost of sneak so keep that in mind and also with each one of the gathering, the rather the crafting skills, you can find there's a passive in each one of those that will cause that particular resource node to glow a bit. And so you'll be able to see it here. I think I have video. And similarly with the Sigic skill line, it'll actually cause chest to, to glow. Most people find that too much to do on more than one character, but I just wanted you to know about it. Uh, the other thing is uh, if you were on PC, the Harvest Nodes add-on, and there's probably other ones, so you can ask around, ask in your local guild what your friends recommend, but the Harvest Nodes add-ons, you'll see it drops whenever you gather from a node, it'll leave a mark there, and next time you're around, you can see where there should be a node ed, and you can it makes gathering a little bit easier. You absolutely don't need this, um, but it, it can be cool to have. The other thing is that uh, what I strongly recommend everybody do is, is is go find your own route. So a couple of things is that you know the the starter zones. So like um, any of the the starter zones tend to have really fast and fa faster like respawn timers and really dense you know nodes there. So that's a great place to go gather nodes. Is any of the starting zones? And honestly, most people don't even start there anymore. But I would also say like you know the problem with people making guides about where to go is then if a bunch of other people are there, well if one other person's there at the same time you are, it's going to kind of ruin that that zone. So and it can be fun to go and explore explore overland, you know, find chests and kind of gather stuff. So I totally recommend that you go look for your own place. Uh, another thing of, of note that the game doesn't really tell you is that Cra I mean, probably does somewhere, but Craglorn can drop. Nurn Crocs, and that's the only place you can get Nurn Crocs for, and it sells for a decent amount, and it just drops from normal nodes. Sometimes you'll just it'll proc and you'll get it. So uh, you know, farming in Craglorn can be really helpful. Now you don't want to be fighting things in Craglorn because originally it was meant to be like a group. The whole zone was meant to be a group area, and so the mobs there can be a little bit harder. And generally, when you're gathering, you don't want to be fighting mobs. So do keep that in mind, especially if you're new to the game, you're low level, what have you. Uh, but just go out and find your own spot, and you'll find great routes. And if nobody else is using it, that might be the most efficient route, especially when other people are. Also a note, like particularly in Cold Harbor, but in other zones, you can actually get furnishings, furnishing items from certain nodes. So like you can get those little like glowy stalks uh, for, from, from Cold Harbor and other things from nodes just specifically within Cold Harbor. And that applies to some other zones as well. And then other than that, I would, uh, main things, I would just make, recommend that you max out your, your bag space and then pick up everything. You know, you really want ESO Plus if you're going to be a gatherer, because otherwise it's going to take up all of your bag space. But if you have ESO Plus, you have, you have a crafting bag that can hold infinite supplies and just grab everything. Turn auto loot on so you don't so you have to click it. It all comes into your bags. Then you can move on to the next one. Absolutely the best way to do it. Again, add on. And, uh, and then make sure you're at movement speed cap. And I think that's it for this guide. There's you know a couple of other things that I could mention, but uh, I, I don't think I really need to. If I didn't mention something in this and it seems good, there's probably a reason that it's not, or it's just like, hey, there might be a better thing there. So if you have any questions about anything or you felt like I left it out, it's very possible. It's my first, first uh, farming guide. Just let me down in the comments or ask down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer that for you and get you straightened out. So anyways, that's it for today. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks everybody for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.